Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and we're going to go ahead and dive into news and week in review. We have a few new segments, a topic of the week, we have all the things that happened last week, the games I played, my 12 by 12 challenge update, some stuff coming up next week, and all of that. Starting off with news. Starting off news, we're going to have, first of all, Triton Noir announces the Apocalypse expansion for Assassin's Creed. Basically, they're coming back to crowdfunding, back to Kickstarter, with Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice Apocalypse. I'm very intrigued, very curious, will probably be trying this, I think they're sending me a copy, so I'll be diving into that. I still never finished the original game. I played like 15 scenarios, and have kind of like just left hanging there, that's the problem with campaign games, although 15 is still not bad, that's one where I really heavily dove into when I first got it, played it a few times intermittently since then, and have not yet had a chance to continue to dive into it. From there we have over here Munchkin South Park, which honestly feels like a, a match, it feels like Munchkin South Park feels like the kind of thing that does go hand in hand, Munchkin uh, is a TV show I watch clips from, South Park is a game I've played, sorry, South Park is a TV show I watch close from, and Munchkin is a game I've played maybe twice, and they do feel like they would work well together, not my jam, but glad it exists. Uh, then we have Osprey announcing new World War II board game General Orders, uh, this is coming to you from, let me see where the announcement is, we coming to you from, from, oh my gosh, where's the designer? The designers David Thompson and someone else. Someone else, I don't see the name over here, from David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin, which are a team, I should have known that. David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin designing, uh, you know, World War II, uh, General Orders World War II is going to be a tight two-player clash spot in the mountains of Italy or the island of, of the Pacific. Very intrigued, but we'll have to play to find out more. See, World War II, in general, that's not my jam as far as thematic stuff in games. But, that said, uh, they design great games in that, in that genre, series, whatever, so we'll have to see. From there we have over here, we have a Plan B announcing Century Big Box Golden Deals Mini Expansion. Basically, they're putting together a Century Big Box for the Century Trilogy, Century Spice Road. Or they have a... I don't know if they're going to have a, goal, a Golem box just yet. They should imagine... I imagine they'll have one because... They they said they likely won't have a Golem big box for the series, but they also said they wouldn't really do anything past the first game, and they kept doing it, so I imagine we can expect to see a Golem big box at some point. This is from Plan B Games, but they have a big box edition and a little uh, Golden Deals mini expansion that will be coming out. Then we have over here, this is a fun one, this is an interesting one, this is one that you might want to know more about, but basically, Teenage Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles United Group Buy. This is a fan-made expansion for Marvel United, that is basically Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles United. You can see over here the cars. I don't know if the, yeah, there we go. You see, look at the, look at these cards over here. That looks pretty cool as far as the, these go. Like this just, just looks cool. And then we have, of course, you know, we're gonna have little sculpts down here. These are just you know kind of samples over here. I don't know what the final quality will be, but effectively we have all this stuff going on over here on this on this page. You can check that out. But we got some graphics, some stuff coming out, some more Marvel United content for those who felt that they didn't have enough Marvel United content. So if you fall into that very small group of people, uh, then you can go ahead and do a group buy to get in on this. If you want to know more information, they should have information in here. They should have information in the thread to get a hold of people to like add yourself to the list. But if you don't for some reason, if you can't, feel free to email me. My email is in the bottom of every video. I'm like... Of course, because I'm stupid, I'm probably getting this, so we'll see. But uh, that's going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles United Group Buy, in case you were interested in that. Then we have over here, we have Wild, Gar Wild Gardens uh, launching on Backkit on uh, March 22nd. It's going to be launching very shortly on Backkit in a handful of days. So you can check that out when that launches. Uh, this one I'm talking about primarily because I really like their last game, uh, Keystone North America. Huge fan of it. I'm excited to see what they do in in, Mar in Wild Gardens. And then lastly, we have over here a fantastic channel, Five Games for Doomsday. He has not put up a video in a while, at least not that I've seen. And he has top five, top the top reasons why gaming is great. Just a general feel good piece about board gaming, about the board gaming space. Uh, this is from a guy who is absolutely Ben is one of the one of the best speakers in the board game business. Uh, his just the way he. The way he talks, the way he communicates, the way he pronounce, pronounces words and carries himself, it is absolutely beautiful. Coming from someone who talks a mile a minute and often stem, stumbles over my own words as I do so, watching Ben is an absolute treat. I highly recommend his channel if you haven't seen it yet. And that's what we have as far as the news and we can review, which brings us to the topic of the week. Topic of the week is bad graphic design in board games. This is one that was going to be a topic a few weeks ago, but I got it kind of got rearranged. But effectively, I find myself playing games a lot. As a content creator, I find myself playing a lot of games. And as a content creator, one of my pet peeves is playing games where the game, by all accounts, should be great, but the graphic design kind of makes me less interested. Bad art and or graphic design, although I often find graphic design more so than art. I think art is more subjective. I think both are subjective, but I think art is more subjective. And I think, I think good graphic design can carry bad art, but I don't think good art can carry bad graphic design. 
Hopefully that makes sense. But graphic design for context is the is the way things are laid out. The way you have, you know, the art itself, but then the car, the layout, the iconography, how the information is presented. Those things are key to being able to deliver what an experience that feels premium, that feels great. And again, I think art and graphic design are both important, but I think graphic design is more important. And when I play games, whether they are prototypes, whether they are final games, when it feels like the graphic design is missing, again, art too, but more graphic design, it makes me not want to play them. Which is a real shame because there are some great games hidden behind mediocre graphic design. Some great games that all they need is that little tweak to push them over the finish line and that's the tweak that's left wanting. Because you have someone designing a game, especially for prototypes, kickstarters and all that. You have someone designing a game and they, they designed the game, they did that part and they kind of have whatever, whoever worked on the art and they did the art and all that. But they, they're figuring out what it all, how it all comes together, how all the parts of the game get made. And art and graphic design are not prioritized the same way that I think they need to be. I think, first of all, they are essential to selling your game in the first place. They are essential to selling the game. But more than that, as someone who plays games that I think look good but not great, as someone who's in that camp, I find that they are not just essential for selling it, but essential for me as a consumer to want to play them. There are games in my collection that don't look great, and I find I am, I am more likely to pull out Dice Throne, a game that has the best art and graphic design out there, but I think the gameplay is good and not great. I'm more likely to pull out that and play that over... Uh, what's the one? Oh my gosh, not Key Forge, but um, Soul Forge. Soul Forge Fusion, a game I've often complained about the fact that I think it's a great game that looks meh. And I, I think that is, it's a shame to see a game come most of the way there and then stumble over that finish line. Now again, obviously these things are subjective, 100%. There are times where I've looked at a game and thought it had bad art and someone's like, oh, I love the art. Inish, one of my favorite games, the art did not pull me in at first. Although that was less bad art and more not my style art. But there's so many games out there, so many art systems, so many graphic design, but a lot of, and also you have things like, uh, you know, Terraforming Mars, which is a good example of a game that has bad art, but honestly, the graphic design does the job, and the bad art, I'm fine with. There are all different systems in different ways that will pull people in, diff in different aspects. For me, I just wish some games really went over that finish line and took it as seriously as they possibly could, because I really think it sells a game and makes you want to play a game. That's a fairly short topic of the week, just a pet peeve, because I've recently I've played a bunch of games that I really enjoyed, and I don't know if I care enough to get them. One of them I do. One of them I enjoyed enough that despite the graphic design, I think I'm going to get it anyway. But some of them I, I enjoy them, and I'm ready to move on from them, because I just am not compelled enough to power through a game that doesn't make me want to play it. Anyways, moving on to the weekend review, starting off with 12 by 12 update. Some major game change, gameplay changes here for my 12 by 12 update. Uh, for those who've been tracking, I'm doing a 12 by 12 challenge where I'm playing 12 games 12 times. I have been adjusting the list as I go through things. The list I had an objective list, and I've hit some of those objectives, but I've definitely been tweaking and adding and removing things as I go through it. And as of right now, I'm completely done with the Feast of Odin. I'm mostly done with uh, uh, Lost Dreams of Arnak. I already have 12 plays. I just need to play the solo campaign. Um, I'm mostly done with Castles of Burgundy. I played Castles of Burgundy with all the base game expansions. I need to play the Vineyards expansion, and I need to play play it solo as well. I may, I may or may not play it solo. I think I will, though, because I really want to get all the experiences. But uh, Castle Burgundy, that's the third one down, so I have already have 12 plays of that. So 36 games done. I got more plays of DI in, so I'm up to 6 plays of DNI, maybe 7 off to check my log plays. And the 6 games of Splendor, which is a surprise addition to the list. Not because I'm enjoying it, not because I'm enjoying it, but because I'm I'm, compl I'm, I'm upset at Splendor, and so I'm playing through it uh, 12 times to see how that adjusts my experience, and because it's short enough to do so. But so at uh, 48 plays there, plus a play of Caverna and Agricola, which are both in that list as well, so we're currently at 50 plays at least out of 144. I say at least again because of the way I adjust plays as I do them means things might move in and out of the list, but we're at least at 50 plays out of my 144 needed plays, uh, so expect a update on Arnak and Castle of Burgundy soon as far as dedicated update videos. Again, I did a 12 by 12 video on Feast for Odin and I hope to do that for Arnak and Castle of Burgundy as well once I fully have those under my belt. But as far as that, past that, as far as the games I played uh, in general, I'll be taking a look at a select few games I played this past week, starting off with the Emerald Flame, an escape room game that is really expensive and really, really worth it, at least in my opinion. Now, so the Emerald Flame is an escape room game. It's a puzzle experience where you go through a sequence of three envelopes each one representing a month, and each one taking about two to three hours. I've only done the first envelope so far, and it's around two hours of play. Now, first off, just from a pure price point comparison, if each envelope gives you at least two hours of play, that's six hours total, that's going to be the equivalent of six unlock games, which means the price point of this is equivalent to around six unlock games, which means the price point is, relatively speaking, fair if you're looking at it as hours per play. If you're looking at it as, hey, an unlock game is 12 bucks, and this game is like 60 bucks, well, that's not fair. 
But if you actually compare what you get out of them, I think it's already fair. And I think the experience is really, really well done. Like, really well done. It is such a good set of puzzles that is not confined to a small space of specifically cards and an app that was incredibly satisfying to go through month one. Incredibly satisfying. I can't remember the last time I've had an escape room game that felt so cleanly satisfying where the puzzles were there the things in your way were there it was not an easy puzzle to solve not by a long shot but like i really really liked month one of the emerald flame now month two is a whole different conversation we'll get to that when we talk about it but i really enjoyed month one i'm looking forward to diving into month two and three but i think it's possibly the best escape room game experience i've had so far and i'm looking forward to more of them but that's the emerald flame uh, past that we have the war of the ring the card game War of the Ring of the Card Game, which I had a chance to play at Dice Tower West and thought was merely okay. It was... That's, that's, that, that's not fair. That's not fair. Let me take a step back. I thought my first play was merely okay, and I think it is a game that would get better with repeat plays. It's a card-driven system, and a lot of things in the game reference other cards, reference pulling cards from other decks, and I really think that in order to get the most out of the War of the Ring experience, you would have to play this game multiple times and play it with people who played it multiple times, because I think anyone's first play is a wash. When... 20% of the cards, it might not be that high, but somewhere in that range, when 20% of the cards in your deck reference other cards and reference pulling in battlegrounds and pulling in that card and doing different things with information that you don't have, I think that's just a very not great first experience and I think it really needs a second play to even begin to shine because you just don't know the deck until then. I mean, this is similar to Airline and Sea. Airline and Sea is a game that I think is amazing, but I think that first play is a write-off. The difference is, Airline and Sea, you have 18 cards to remember, and the first play is 10 minutes, versus War of the Ring the Card Game could be an hour and a half long experience, which I think is really fun, I think it's decently fun, and I think would shine a lot more as you get repeated plays under your belt. For myself, I don't feel the need to dive heavily into the system. I might at some point, just like uh, if, if I need to review it at some point, I'll dive into it more. As of right now, I don't plan on reviewing it. I consider this my review of the game. I, I think War of the Ring is potentially great, and I think it needs more plays to really shine and see where it ends up. And I'm not currently prepared to give it those more plays, at least not yet. I think it's a card driven system, which for me, Watergate is still the one that shines the most in that system, and Watergate is one that I liked a lot in my first play, and I proceeded to like it more and more in each subsequent play. War of the Ring, I'm okay with my first play, and I, it would be a longer experience, and I'm just, I'm not prepared to give it that right now. So, uh, a good game, I can see why people would like it, and I'm not prepared to give it the time that I would need to love it as opposed to being okay with it. And then lastly, Agricola. As part of my 12x12 challenge, I've been diving into many games, and I'm diving into Agricola again because I want to give Caverna and Agricola 12 plays, and not just do reviews of them, but then do comparison videos of play this, not that, between Caverna and Agricola. That would be my goal. But Agricola is very solid. It's a game that I haven't played in... Well, I played it around a year and a half ago, somewhere around, somewhere around there. I played, it, I played a game or two around a year and a half ago, but then before that, I hadn't played in like seven years. One of the first games I got into the hobby with, a game about sheep and cows and pigs and wood and clay and, and all these things, and it's driven by a lot of cards in a way that I think is a very rewarding system, and I think it is a very good system, but I think I'm only ever really going to play it on BGA these days. I think in person there are too many games competing for its time, and BGA and Borgham Arena, it's easy to knock out a bunch of games, and so I don't mind playing through 12 plays there. I might get my hands on a copy just so I can actually dive into it physically and also for the review. I'll have to figure that out. But Agricola is one that playing it online is reminding me that yes, I do like it. Yes, I do enjoy it. But I don't think I ever need to play it over Caverna, which I think I like a lot more. Although, we'll see, because I need 12 plays in my belt and we'll see how that goes. Also, my play of Caverna right now is not going great. I'm currently playing through Caverna. And it's not going the best because I dove into it with having not played it in a year and a half, thinking I could just power through it, and I can't because I played Caverna like twice a while. I played Caverna twice last year, and then haven't played it in a year and a half. And I think that's not enough for me to lock in the muscle memory. Versus Agricola, when I played it, I played it like seven or eight times, and then didn't play it for a while. And that was easier to jump straight into a play and just not worry about the rules. So yeah, there's that. Anyways, moving on to the, the, the weekend review. Starting off with Saturday. This past Saturday, I did a video for KO Corral. It's going to be a flicking dexterity game. It was a preview video. Devin did that. A flicking dexterity game that is basically all about trying to flick little dice bullets at your opponents. Very satisfying game. I've played it. Check out the video by, by Devin. Uh, then later on Saturday, we had a review for Point City. This is from Flat Out Games. I overall enjoyed it. It falls into the Splendor category. It's a very light Splendor adjacent game. I enjoyed it. Probably not the experience I need to dive into. It's, it's on the lighter side. It's a good small box game. 
happy to play it, don't need to play it. Then we have Sunday. I did Where Are They Now? Looking back at the reviews I did last March and last March 2022. On Monday, we had the most expensive Kickstarter games. I was at Dice Tower West, so I did not do a two-back or not to back. Instead, I did the most expensive Kickstarter games that are currently out there. And um yeah, it was I covered a bunch of games, including including um including uh Oh my gosh, Freedom 5, which by the way, speaking of news and we can review, Freedom, Vi Freedom 5 has its PO, its pledge manager, not PO, PM, has its pledge manager closing fairly shortly. So you can check out that if you want to uh, check your last chance to get in on Freedom 5. After I just told you, it was one of the most expensive Kickstarter games I've ever backed, although you don't have to go all in. On Tuesday, Tuesday we had a, a, pre a review video, not really a review, a call it a preview i guess it was a it had opinions it's just i wouldn't call it a full review uh townsfolk tussle the expansions nefarious neighbors and odd jobs although i think they renamed it i think it's something else neighbors and odd jobs or foul neighbors foul neighbors and odd jobs is that what they recalled it to anyways uh, the kickstarter is currently going on that one but i did a, a preview i call it again it had opinions but it didn't have all the content so it's a limited experience whatever content they gave me i was able to talk about and i did and the content they didn't i wasn't so not really a first impressions not really a review a preview with opinions, call it that. Uh, but anyways, I really enjoyed it. I thought it's a good addition to Townsville Tussle. If you don't like Townsville Tussle, it's not changing your mind. If you do like Townsville Tussle, it's more good stuff. Plus, they have like a big box and coins and other fun things on the Kickstarter page. Then on, that was Tuesday. Later on Tuesday, we had a review for Tragedy Looper. Gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I enjoy Tragedy Looper, but it's a very hard game. Similar to um, War of the Ring, which I mentioned already. It's one of those games where you just need to play it with people who know the game already. And I just, I hate when games have that barrier to entry to even enjoy your first play. I don't mind barrier to entry to liking a game more. But like when, when you really have to struggle through to get to a point where the game system works for you, I want it to happen on the first play ideally. Uh, there's a argument to be made for expertise and learning things and all that. But I just want to have a good time and I want the people I play with to have a good time. Then lastly on Tuesday, we had a review for Carson City. Uh, one of my favorite games. I've always enjoyed Carson... Uh, always, I, well, I guess always. It's my first play of Carson City. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, it's one I've talked about a lot, but never given a dedicated review. And since it's coming back to crowdfunding, I figured now's a good time to talk about it. So uh, Carson City, uh, the review of that one. Then on Wednesday... Wednesday we had Between Two Cities, a review of Between Two Cities from Stone Mountain Games, Essential Edition, going over that one. I really liked it, it's a solid game, but also I'm fine moving on from it, it's on the lighter side, and I find Seven Wonders continues to scratch that itch for me in a way that I don't need other games for. So uh, overall, enjoy it. I enjoy, I enjoy uh, Between Two Cities, but I didn't need to keep it. Then, weekly, then later on Wednesday we had the Weekly Live with myself, Devin, and Meg. This time going over a game show as usual, I did a rhyming game show where I gave a little poem to a little two-sentence rhyme for a bunch, bunch of different games so that to figure out what game I was talking about. I really enjoyed drafting those, and I really enjoyed the show. Um, but yeah, that's the game show there. And then we also talked about things we like and don't like in board game tables. Not like the company board game tables, which is now known as All Play, but in like board game tables. Then later on, that was Wednesday. Wednesday. Then on Thursday. Thursday we had, no, no, no. Later on Wednesday we had a gameplay of Marvel United Phoenix 5 going as far into the Phoenix 5 as we possibly could. Check out that video. See if we made it all the way. See if we died along the way. You can check it out. A gameplay with myself, Devin, and Akiva, if I recall correctly. Then on Thursday. Thursday, I had a announcement video for Level Up Retreat. This is not really an announcement. An update. An update video for Level Up Retreat. Basically, Level Up Retreat, if you're not familiar with it, that's going to be the convention that we're running uh, July 14th through 16th. This is a convention that's being uh, run by Level Up Retreats, and I'm hosting it. Board Game Co. is hosting it. And it's, uh, it's Level Up Events and host... Level Up Events and Board Game Co. are hosting Level Up Retreats. Uh, it's going to be a convention in July 14th to 16th in Connecticut in the tri-state area. Badges are currently on sale. You can check that out. You can jump in. There's going to be a swag bag. There's going to be copies of 20 Strong to anyone gets the VIP badge. Uh, so check that out. Lots of fun swag, including, again, advanced copies of 20 Strong. So that should be a fun little opportunity to get your hands on that. And also to play games and have a good time. That's, uh, that's also a big thing. But you can check out that video on Thursday. Later on Thursday, we had 2021 games that faded for me. 15 games from 2021 that I, that I really liked and then faded for me. I still like them. To be Well, that's not true. Some of them I still like, some of them not so much, but they've all gone down for me. So, for example, one of those games is even in my best games of 2021. But it started off here and then it went down here, but it's still... You can check it out. 2021 games that faded on me. And then on Friday, Friday we had a Dice Tower West recap video. Going over my experience with Dice Tower West, the people I saw, the games I played, the games I didn't get to play, the events I did, all those fun things at Dice Tower West. And then lastly, we had on Saturday, Saturday we had a review for Splendor, as well as a review for Namaji. That's today. Today, we have coming up a review for Splendor and a review for Namaji coming up on the channel. You can check that out. And then next week, we'll have a few videos going up. I'll have a review for Galactic Renaissance, which will be launching this Tuesday. We'll have a review for, not review, we'll have a video for 10 Kickstarter Red Flags. 
flags that I did together with Brian Greer from Game Brigade, uh, basically covering the things that are red flags for us, reasons not to back a Kickstarter effectively. And then lastly, as far as the games on the table, we have a bunch of games that I want to play. We have Rolling Heights, which I really want to dive into. I'm excited for this one finally showing up. Had a chance to play this at Dice Tower West, and uh, I, I played it a lot before as well, before the preview for the Kickstarter page. Really enjoyed this one. Pagan Fate of Roanoke, I've had on the table before, but I've refreshed myself on the rules. I'm ready to go on it. Uh, the Farmer's Market, I've been playing the... Uh, Lost Seas or whatever version of this that's currently on BGA and this is the you know the uh, US version different theme but same gameplay I'm looking forward to diving into this one because I think it's a fun little puzzle and then we have Sentinels of the Multiverse which I have a lot of these games are in shrink they will be de shrink shortly but then we have over here as well this is not EOS this is instead uh YTDO, no, TDO, Titan Defense Organization, coming to you from uh, King Raccoon Games. I had a chance to play this on TTS, and I'm looking forward to playing it in person with this copy that's in an EOS Island of Angels box with paper taped on top of it. But I had a chance to play that one online. It's basically almost cross of King of Tokyo and Marvel United, almost in terms of what it's doing, but I really enjoyed the gameplay I had. Some aspects are finicky, but I'm hoping they'll change those prototype and all that stuff. We'll see, but I overall thought it was a lot of fun to play through. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this a wrap. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.